through winter's frail and biting nights and summer's fleeting escapades. You've been there with me, by my side, a bond that cannot be betrayed. We've made each other laugh and cry. We've seen the world through rosy shades. You've guarded me throughout it all, your columns built like palisades. You are my true and deepest love. Your name is like my own heart's beat. I hear it when I close my eyes. Spreadsheet, 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 spreadsheet. I know without a single doubt I'll be with you till end of time. We'll travel all across the world from cell A1 to Z99. I'll row you down the river Seine and say, two, one, 11, eight, and where the rest but numbers here, you'll know it is in fact a date. The sum of you and I is love, our souls tuned like an orchestra. They make up more than just their parts. It's provable by formula. And as the years begin to fly, Time's hand will guide me to my grave. For while we are both made of cells, mine sadly do not autosave. <laughs> but do not fret, my gritted friend, for in this bittersweet farewell, I'll know its thanks to only you that in this life I did excel. Thank you, everyone. I'm Graham. And I'm Ashkan. And we're here giving this talk because we're in love with spreadsheets. And it's a wonderful kind of love, one that doesn't involve jealousy, fighting, or divorce, uh, except on some rare occasions. <laughs> loving spreadsheets is like loving duct tape. It's the love of an unexpectedly useful tool that with enough creativity and dedication, you can do almost anything with. Now, I know there are some people out there who believe that love between humans and spreadsheets is unnatural. But we're here to make a stand and say that it's one of the most natural things in the world. In fact, we believe that humans and spreadsheets are meant to be with each other. And this love goes far back into the history of human civilization. There was a point in human history when things as basic as writing, numbers, and three-dimensional stacked area charts didn't exist. All humans had back then was a dream. A dream that has been present in human beings since we could call ourselves human. The dream of spreadsheets. The earliest records of counting go back 40 to 75,000 years. And even before we had numbers, we could still compare marks on an object or drawing with the number of animals in a herd or track the number of magic mushroom trips that you accidentally went on. Written language came around 5,500 years ago, etched into stone and clay. And with this came tax forms which actually make up a humongous portion of early writings that we've discovered, with some hymns, laws, and crude jokes thrown in there as well. Here you can actually see early papyrus from about 4,600 years ago. And, uh, oh wait, does uh, something there look a little familiar? This early spreadsheet shows detailed accounting for the construction of the Pyramid of Giza, one of hundreds of sheets discovered, proving once and for all that it's spreadsheets and not aliens responsible for the pyramids. If you're an ancient record keeper and you're in charge of collecting and making sense of all this information, it's hard to imagine that you didn't dream of some kind of magic grid that could tabulate its own numbers. From plotting stars to making crop charts to organizing large projects to, of course, taxes, there's likely not a single human in charge of all this data who didn't fantasize of something that, in all likelihood, looks a lot what our like what our modern spreadsheets look like. Mainly because throughout history, humans still did all the things that we currently do in spreadsheets. They just did them a lot slower and a lot worse. Even if we look just at the very basic spreadsheet functions, like adding and subtracting, we can see how primitive our options have been over time. The abacus was the best we had for a long time, pretty much 4,000 years. Literally, the only other mathematical tool that we used for longer was our fingers. It wasn't until the 1600s that the slide rule finally ended the abacus's reign of mathematical terror. And from there, it wasn't long before these clunky calculating machines were created with wooden and metal gears and dials not commonly in use until the 1800s. And then after that, you might be surprised to know that the next real revolution in calculation wasn't until we got big honking computers in the 1940s, only available to specially trained people who were deemed worthy of access. Most of us were still using slide rules or doing math longhand like chumps. 
20 years later, in the late 1960s, the first handheld electronic calculators were made. And just look at those beauties. And within just a decade and a half, they had dethroned slide rules. Personal computers for hobbyists were also around at that same time in the 1970s. But they were still pretty technical. They actually had a little paper printout and no screen. Uh, not a lot of people had the resources or the interest to purchase one. And uh, 1977 is what actually marked the birth of the age of personal mass market computers like the Apple II. Two years later, in 1979, humans produced what is, to this day, considered to be one of the pinnacles of human achievement, VisiCalc, the first ever spreadsheet program. It's considered to be the first killer app. Like, literally, the phrase was invented and then applied to it. Before VisiCalc, people shopped for computers based on technical specifications. And after VisiCalc came out, people shopped for computers based on whether or not they could run VisiCalc. Through the 80s and into the 90s, ever-improving spreadsheet applications continued to be one of the largest driving forces behind computer sales, including the introduction of Microsoft Excel in 1985. And from there, things just kept getting more and more advanced, to the point that you could be sitting at a conference, watching a presentation, and not even realize that the entire thing is, in fact, a spreadsheet. And this isn't us just glorifying the impact of spreadsheets because we happen to love them. This is actually a well-established history. There have been two real explosions that have propelled the industry forward. The first one uh, really happened in 1977, and it was the spreadsheet. I remember when uh, Dan Feilstra, who ran the company that marketed the first spreadsheet, walked into my office at Apple one day and pulled out this disk from his uh, vest pocket and said, I, I have this incredible new program. I call it a visual calculator, and it became VisiCalc. And that's what really drove, propelled the Apple II to, to the success it, it achieved. And beyond just moving Apple forward, VisiCalc was one of the early reasons that businesses and individuals purchased computers at all. Check out this clip of a panel with the developers where they're talking about one of the many numerous awards that they got for developing VisiCalc. Together, they were honored by the Western Society of Engineers Washington Award. And I want to read to you, as I change the citation, from the award letter where they were recognized for the invention of the first computer spreadsheet software program, which led to the proliferation of the computer industry, which in turn led to the economic expansion of the late 20th century. <laughs> Perhaps living as you do in modern luxury with a plethora of free and paid spreadsheet apps for simply strewn about your hard drive, this reaction to their initial launch might be surprising. To others of us, it's the result of a millennia's old dream of a traceable ancestral desire finally come to fruition. And now, one of the most powerful and sophisticated tools humans have ever designed lies waiting for you to wield. And as you start to use it, you'll feel yourself becoming more and more powerful, like a sorcerer slowly learning to harness the abilities that they possess. So, let's take you through the journey of learning to wield the might of a spreadsheet and explore what sort of new powers you'll unlock along the way. Before you've ever started using spreadsheets, you're just a normal human. Nothing more than a skin sack full of meat popsicles who has yet to realize their full potential. But now you're ready to take your first step towards that potential. And the first step is when you realize that you can use spreadsheets to simply take information and display it nicer than you could in a normal text document. Some information is just better suited to being laid out in a table, and putting it into a table does more than just make it easier to digest. It can also make it more functional. For example, Here's a list of some of the float-on owners and a couple of interesting facts about each of us. Not only can you easily compare specific pieces of information between us, but if I need to quickly get a list of just our favorite colors, I can highlight just this column over here. Or if I wanted to look at information for just one of us, I could highlight that row. Good. So now you've had your first sip from the wellspring of spreadsheetitude. But instead of finding yourself quenched, you feel parched. Your lips ever thirsty for the ambrosia that you have just tasted. As you keep pushing forward, the next thing you learn is how to effectively use, uh, how effectively spreadsheets can help you stay organized. 
The columns of a spreadsheet make it simple to easily track a person or thing and uh, track its progress through a series of different steps. It basically becomes a simplified CRM system and can really help you stay on top of large projects. We've used spreadsheets to help organize things like our art program, our music program, and when we were planning the conference, it was basically nothing more than a big series of spreadsheets with a little layer of Steven Johnson thrown on top so you didn't notice. At this point, creating a spreadsheet is basically the first move we make when we start in on almost any project. And the key here is to have absolutely no faith in your ability to remember anything. Once you give up that delusion and instead start treating spreadsheets as your external brain, your mind will become unburdened and allow itself to spend its time doing what it really wants to do, wondering if a pet giraffe would love you the same way that you would love it. You're now starting to feel more powerful in your spreadsheet training, but you know there's so much more. Thus far, you've only been exploring the innate powers within you, but a vast world of abilities is simply waiting at your fingertips. It's time to learn your first spells and begin to use spreadsheet formulas. Need to sum up sales numbers to get a total? Figure out the average price paid of a certain retail item? Count how many of your customers' phone numbers have an eight in them so that you can see if your numerological chart says that you're gonna be blessed with extra sales this moon cycle? No problem. Spreadsheets can eat these tasks for breakfast. For example, here's a spreadsheet full of phrases we're trying to bring back in fashion. We can easily count how many of them include dogs with this formula, which should be a pretty reliable indicator for how successful we're likely to be. And the thing is, once you learn some of the basics in terms of how to use spreadsheet formulas, you unlock the ability to access a tremendous amount of data about your business. Now, lots of software that you use for business is going to have built-in reporting, but there's always a thousand different ways to cut and slice data. And you don't really know if that program is going to give you the information exactly as you want it. Fortunately, almost all of that data can be exported to raw spreadsheets, and from there, you can do almost anything with it. A little spreadsheet know-how lets you figure out pretty much whatever metrics you want about your business, which means you don't have to keep waiting for your software company to build in that new report you asked about, which is constantly getting delayed because the owners are too busy trying to find the perfect outfit for their spreadsheet talks. At this point, there's no looking back. A faint but noticeable grid of lines has started to overlay itself on everything you see. Numbers out in the world look like they're just begging to be tabulated, summed, and rounded. But you know that the well of spreadsheet knowledge is deep. And right now, you are but treading on the surface. The next step of your journey begins when you start to use spreadsheets for actually modeling different scenarios. Let's say you're considering doing a price raise, or you want to expand your hours, but you're not sure at what point the extra payroll cost makes it not worth it. You can easily set up factors you want to adjust in their own cells, and then reference those cells using formulas to do your other number crunching for you automatically. This allows you to easily model as many different scenarios as you want by simply changing the variables and seeing how it affects every other number along the way. At this level, you also gain the ability to drive yourself completely insane by overanalyzing every possible version of every possible scenario. So, you've now completed a substantial amount of your training, and you're ready to take your skills outside of the academy. It's at this point that your grasp of spreadsheets is so powerful, you begin to use spreadsheets just as a method to get through your everyday life. You discover that spreadsheets have a myriad of purposes in your leisure activities. For example, Here's a spreadsheet I use to make a sandwich. Now, I don't always uh, accompany my lunches with a spreadsheet, but this particular sandwich was a concept I came up with where a single sandwich changes toppings every couple inches, freeing you from the tyranny of needing to choose just a single type of sandwich to eat for lunch. One day, I decided to make one that fully transitioned between 24 different types of sandwiches, which is simply more sandwich than a man can keep in his head. But spreadsheets were there to help me accomplish my dreams, allowing this beautiful sandwich to be born. And the use of spreadsheets for fun goes beyond just inventing groundbreaking evolutions in the field of sandwich three. <clears throat> this is a painting by Tatsuo Horiuchi, a Japanese artist who creates his artwork entirely using Excel. And this is a game by Tyler Robertson that is a playable dungeon crawler that is entirely built in a spreadsheet. You can click on the buttons up here to control the character, collect keys, and progress through a series of levels. Of course, your hunger to harness the power of spreadsheets does not stop here. 
You're no longer satisfied with the spells written by the Council of Excelsiors. You're ready to take things in your own hands and tap into the pure energy at the source of spreadsheets itself. It's at this point that you start to use macros and scripts, programmatic tools that allow you to go beyond the scope of what you can do within the UI of the spreadsheet itself, allowing you to have interactive elements, sophisticated workflows, automation, and essentially endless control of what the, uh, the spreadsheet is able to perform. And uh, at this level, you can honestly just start to do some truly amazing things. Here's a video by Dylan Talchi, where he built an entire music creation program using Excel. And this is a fully 3D rendered Doom-like game that blogger C. Bell built entirely inside of a spreadsheet. As you can see, it has active lighting effects and even has enemies that you can fight and that can hurt you. The entire game is actually able to run without any macros, only spreadsheet formulas, but you have made a version with macros that allows you to use your keyboard as a controller to move around. <clears throat> so, at this stage, your spreadsheet prowess has elevated you beyond the realm of mere mortals, and you're ready to compete against other titans of your stature. That's when you decide to enter the Financial Modeling World Cup, which is a real competition that can really be watched online or on ESPN8, The Ocho, which really airs obscure sports. Grand masters of spreadsheets compete head-to-head -head by being given complicated scenarios that are modeled as data sets inside of a spreadsheet, they're then asked to figure out the answers to various questions that take sophisticated spreadsheet manipulation to calculate, and they gain points for every answer they get correct in a given amount of time. It truly is the sport of kings. At the final level of spreadsheet knowledge, you're now a pseudo-divinity, able to use spreadsheets to manipulate the very fabric of reality around you, peering deeper and deeper into the cell-based structure of the universe while slowly phasing in and out of this material world. You also know how to use pivot tables. Now, I'm sure some of you have been on board with us the entire time, and you probably already have a spreadsheet of all the times that spreadsheets have meaningfully impacted your life. For others of you, spreadsheets can seem intimidating. And it makes sense when you're faced with such raw, unmitigated power. It's hard to know where to start. But getting proficient at spreadsheets is easier than you probably think. We think the best way to learn how to use spreadsheets is through a mix of faith and Google. The faith part is having confidence that anything that you want to do in a spreadsheet is possible. The Google part is how you figure out how to actually do it. And as you start playing around with spreadsheets, the best way to get better is just to resist the temptation to do anything by hand. Even if it would be faster to just go through and manually count something or clean up data in a column one by one, spend the time and search the internet for how to do it with a formula or how to automate it. If you do this every time you're faced with a problem, you'll constantly be learning more and more formulas, moving yourself higher and higher up the levels of spreadsheet mastery, and bringing yourself one step closer to competing in the Financial Modeling World Cup. And look, we know what some of you out there are thinking. Duh, Graham and Ashcon, there's like a million pieces of fancy software out there nowadays. Why wouldn't I just use one of those instead of one of these smear sheets or whatever you guys are talking about? Yeah, that's what you sound like. <laughs> Pretty embarrassing. Listen, we know there's a lot of software out there nowadays, and that there are things that are much more user-friendly and slick than a spreadsheet, and most of them will give you stats and graphs on your information faster and easier than a spreadsheet. But the problem is, the more you add slick user interfaces and pre-made graphs, the more you're boxed into what that specific piece of software is designed to show you. The beauty about spreadsheets is how many different things you can do with them. It's sort of like how there are special tools for cutting all sorts of individual types of fruit. Does a pineapple slicer cut a pineapple more easily and evenly than you would be able to with a knife? Yeah, sure. But what happens when you want to cut a strawberry? You need to go buy one of those fancy strawberry cores. And then what happens when you want some watermelon? And you have to go buy this specialized watermelon cuber. It's a little harder to cut any fruit with a knife than with a specialized tool, but the knife gives you the freedom to cut any piece of fruit that comes your way and saves you from having a kitchen gadget or a drawer full of these crazy gadgets in your kitchen. 
And at the end of the day, the more you use the knife, the better you get at cutting things with it, which makes you that much more proficient at making an excellent fruit salad. And if you add some fresh mint and a little bit of lemon juice, I mean, now we're really talking. People won't even take a bite of Cindy's famous artichoke dip at this year's 4th of July party. The, uh, the point here is that using spreadsheets lets you become that much better at using spreadsheets, which then makes using spreadsheets that much more useful. But like many things, the most intimidating step is just knowing how to start. So let's show you. That's right. It's time for a live spreadsheet demo, which we're pretty sure will go down in history as the most exciting thing that has ever happened in this arena. First, let's collect some data. So if everybody out there doesn't mind taking a second, we have prepared a quick survey for you, which you can get to by just scanning this QR code from your phone. This is only for existing float centers, so apologies to everyone else out there. Uh, and this QR code itself is actually something that we generated using a spreadsheet formula. So we'll give you guys a second. And if you don't know the uh, exact answers to the questions, that's fine. Put in your best guesses. Uh, this isn't like the industry report or something, which you should all fill out, by the way, industry report. For people watching virtually, you can scan this and fill it out, too. And while we wait for everyone to fill it out, Let's enjoy some footage from the Financial Modeling World Cup so you can experience the thrill firsthand. We start out with 10,000 points. Each time you land on a cell, you deduct some points, but the red cells, your points get cut in half. The green cells, your points Double. are multiplied in two. And the ultimate goal is to figure out how many points you have when you get to the finish line. Yeah. So uh, just a so, lot, a lot to model here. Go ahead. So Michael is on the board now. Let's look at Michael. Mm -hmm. so one. Okay. The named ranges. Yeah. All right. Uh, and I tell you, you know, with with um, with those directions, uh, you know, I did bring it into Power Query, split columns into rows, boom, the lookup table right there. Really? Oh, no, not, yeah, yeah, just two columns, just two columns. So it was just an X lookup and no two way lookup name. needed. Right. Oh, look at that. Oh, we have Dearmid at 311 points. <clears throat> Uh, which okay. is bad news. He should have 320 points if at the end of this level. Three, right, right. So yeah, something so is off. One of those, one of those is an error. If there was anything that had commas in it and didn't uh, get copied correctly, you know, Excel Online is, uh, you know, really coming along. It's getting much better, but there's still little weird bugs yeah. between Win32 and, and Excel Online. So it's getting there. Uh, and notice down in the corner there, DIMS APM, uh, actions per minute, 195, uh, which is uh, pretty fast for a case that is this difficult. All right, so he's he's currently working at level four. This is worth 200 points, uh, 20 answers that are 10 points each. And in general, you know, once you get the logic to build uh, one answer, you should be able to copy that logic down. So generally, yeah. we'll see. Thrilling, truly. All right, so now we have some data. Let's start getting our hands dirty. First thing we want to do is convert all these answers that people said are in kilograms over into pounds, because we're in the United States. And we'll just make a quick equation here to say that, hey, if people entered it in kilograms, go ahead and convert it over into pounds using the convert formula. And otherwise, you can just keep it as the number was entered in pounds and that'll put everything into the same unit so we can actually compare them side by side and it'll make sense. And once we have one cell done, it's as easy as highlighting everything or sometimes even just hitting enter on Google Sheets. Then we hit command enter, boom, fill out the entire column immediately. And with selecting that column in I'm the bottom right. get rid of this one here. That doesn't seem very realistic. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So once we select the entire column, uh, we can easily see th things like the sum and the average. Uh, we can also see the min and the max, which someone said the minimum order was one pound of salt. Uh, 
<laughs> okay, thank you. And 10,000, it looks like, was the max that someone entered over there. But all of this is just child's play as far as spreadsheets are concerned. New tab. Suppose what we really want to see isn't just individual float centers and how much salt they ordered, but a visual of how much salt the entire industry is ordering on a month-by-month -month basis. So we're going to take all of these orders and move them over into this new tab, and we're actually going to transpose the data so that it shows up horizontally along the top there, as opposed to vertically. And then we're just going to take a little styling, make sure that this uh, sheet doesn't get too out of hand over here, and that we can navigate and see things easily. And then for the left-hand side, we're going to ch chart months going along there. So we'll start with the current month, put in the next month, and then use spreadsheet magic to just click and drag, and it'll automatically in in uh, infer what months we're going to put after that. So we'll drag it out for 10 years here. So now what we've made is a grid of everyone and all of their salt orders along the top, and months going forward for 10 years along the left-hand side. And the fun begins. What we're going to do from here is to plot out everyone's salt orders in the month that they made them. So on months where they ordered nothing, we're going to put zeros. And on months where we forecast that they're going to order salt according to their uh, numbers they put in, or you guys put in, we're going to put that exact number of salt in there. So to start out, we're just going to find when the last salt order they did is, which we have the info for, and then start plotting that forward um, on a graph with the uh, order frequency that you have. So uh, we're going to use some fancy equations. We use mod to divide those with each other and find out if there's a remainder, which tells us what months you actually ordered salt in. Don't worry too much about the specifics. And we're going to go back and just set some of these as constants using a dollar sign so that when we click and drag this over the entire sheet, uh, it's not going to get out of hand. So now that we have that in one cell, we select every other cell for 10 years and hit an error. What'd you do? <laughs> and hit command enter. There we go. And it automatically fills in all of the salt orders projected for the next 10 years for everyone who filled this out. Blammo. But, thank you very much. Let's not stop there. Now that we have this, we can sum up the rows of salt orders to get a total for every, every salt order that people are projected to order in the month that it's ordered. Take all of those and then graph it out into its own graph then we can take this straight to Wall Street and start trading on Epsom salt futures, being hailed as the most prodigious financial forecasters of the century, and very, very likely to be interviewed on Mad Money with Jim Cramer by the end of the week. And as a final touch, we can put a little photo of myself and Ashcon in the corner, giving our thumbs up for a certified job, well done, and our project is complete. We're also going to make this image available so that you can put it on all of your own internal spreadsheets, which is highly recommended by pretty much all spreadsheet professionals out there. So now you, that you've seen some real-life spreadsheet wizardry in action, we wanted to wind things down by leaving you with your own little starter kit, or spell book, if you will. Uh, it's a little something we call Graham and Ashcon's Super Neat Spreadsheet Cheat Sheet. And it's available if you go over to Graham and Ashcon's Super Neat Spreadsheet Cheat Sheet dot com. Just download it or save it to your own Google Drive to get it to work. It contains a bunch of the most useful keyboard shortcuts and uh, formulas, and just general tips that we found are the things we use most commonly when we're going to use spreadsheets ourselves. Which is a lot. Uh, it also includes a little game that we made in spreadsheets to help you settle any small arguments that you get in during the conference. So if you're trying to decide who's buying the next round of lobster rolls or who has to wait for the elevator, uh, just click over here and decide who's player one and two. Uh, click this little button to duke it out. And as an extra, extra bonus, there's a sheet in here with the recipe that we like to use when we're making Taiwanese-style dumplings. And you can actually just go up here, adjust how many dumplings you want to make, and with a little spreadsheet magic, it'll automatically adjust all the different amounts of uh, ingredients for you. We like to make these in big batches and freeze them because we love them so much but not as much as we love spreadsheets. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you.